Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at the new technical preview release of the upcoming Windows 10 from Microsoft, of course. This is known as Build 9926, and it adds some new features, and this just came out yesterday, so sort of still fresh, so we're going to be taking a look at it. And if you want to download this, you can download it for free without any kind of registration from Microsoft.com. I have a link in the description for that. And the first thing that I've noticed is that they've added quite a few more languages than before. Before they only had like English and uh, Mandarin and a couple others. I don't remember, but it seems like there's a lot more now. And there is an x86 and an x64 version. The 64-bit version is almost a gig bigger than the x86 version, and it's pretty large, 3.98 gigs. I don't think Windows 7 was nearly that large. I think it was around 3.3 for an ISO. But anyway, let's move on to the actual installation. And they do provide the product key. I didn't have to enter one. I think it's because I installed on a virtual machine and it detects that. So, that's nice. Power it on. So the installation is pretty much the same as before. Same as the previous technical preview, same as Windows 8.1, same as Windows 7, same as Windows Vista, so nothing really new here. Okay, so we have our EULA here, and of course there was a big kerfuffle over the fact that it sends data back to Microsoft. It tells you that it does right here. And, well, this is pre-release software intended for people to be testing and evaluating. It's a T&E operating system. This is not a final release. So you should expect it to send data back. That's just the nature of pre-release software like this. It's a technical preview, not final. So it doesn't really bother me that it sends info back to Microsoft because this is not a final product. So that's my opinion on that. And we're just going to go ahead and wait for the installation to finish here. All right, we are back, and ah, it's so bright. I don't know why they chose to use a white screen instead of the, like, purple or whatever color it was for the 8.1. I really hope they change that, because this is definitely a deal breaker right here. I shouldn't have to look at this the first time I install my operating system. So we're just going to go ahead and use Express Settings, because it's faster... And now we have the option to sign into our Microsoft account. And yes, you can still use local accounts. You just go to create an account. And then eventually it'll load the page here. I say eventually. Did it crash? Oh, God. Yeah, uh, I was going to mention this a little bit later, but this build is very buggy, I should say. And this is definitely a departure from the... Windows 7 betas and RC1s and all that that I tested back in the day. Because from what I remember, Windows 7 beta was like rock solid. It was pretty much the exact same thing as the final release. They're developing new things and it's, uh, it's not based on Vista like the old one. It's based on whatever they're working on with 8.1 and, you know... It's pre-release, you should expect bugs, but this is exceptionally buggy. Alright, we are back, and I think it's because I was impatient and didn't let it load. It took a little bit, actually a lot longer than it did before. But anyway, like I was saying, there's a scroll bar here that you can't see normally. You can just scroll down and sign in without a Microsoft account. It's so bright. There. Finish. Oh, password hint is the other field. My bad. My B dog. So I don't know if they're going to require Microsoft accounts in the future, but as you'll see later in the video, they really segment the, you know, the traditional, I guess, experience with Windows and this new, as they call it, software as a service garbage, where you got like the store and Xbox and maps and all this other, like, OneDrive shit, and the main theme is that you don't have to have any of that other stuff. It's when you link it with your Microsoft account, that's when you're able to do all that extra crap. So you can do 
just your normal computer stuff as your regular account and then leave all that stuff on the other side. And I think that's really good for the conventional PC user because not everybody is going to want an app store and all this stuff. Let us start. So, it doesn't really look too different from the previous build. Of course, we knew we now have the search bar, and yes, we have Cortana. We'll talk about it in a bit, probably around the end of the video. And right off the bat, I want to tell you the number one feature of this new build, and that is in the Windows Explorer. If you open Explorer, of course, it goes to this um, library page. They used to call it libraries, now it's frequent folders or quick access or something. If you go to, I believe, view options, change folder options, you can have it open to my computer or this PC. So it's like old school now. Like you open that and then you're right there. It's perfect. This is the way it should have always been. They changed it, I think, in Windows 7 to go to the libraries, which is stupid. I don't know why they did that. This is much better. Definitely my favorite feature of Windows 10 so far. Yeah, it's pretty minor. So uh, let's go ahead and install our VMware tools. Uh, we're using VMware 11, Workstation 11. So tools, as far as I can tell, work. And keeps telling me to tap things, run the launcher. Close this. We need better better resolution. And they supposedly have been working on the virtual desktops to make them more compatible or better or something. Uh, it's this button. So you can add a desktop, of course. We'll go to it and we'll go to this one. But the weird thing is that, you know, it's in Alt Tab, so you Alt Tab to that. But it changes the position of where it is on the alt tab thing, which is, I don't know if it's always been like that, but it's kind of weird to me at least. I'm just finding little things that are kind of annoying in Windows 10 right now. Um, as you remember in Windows 8.1, they had the, like when you click the network thing instead of, well, in Windows 8.1, you got that big purple bar on the right side that told you your network settings. In this, it, well, I don't actually remember if the older technical previews had a proper, um, like, little menu. I don't know what it's called exactly, but in this one, it just links to the uh, network settings if it doesn't break. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and reboot first. Uh, supposedly, they're going to fix that eventually. Not sure when. Restarting. And one interesting thing that I read is that apparently in the older builds, when you hit num lock or caps lock or scroll lock, it didn't light up your LEDs on the keyboard. I had no idea of this, but apparently this was a bug and it was fixed recently. So yeah, this is definitely work in progress stuff here. Not polished. Nowhere near 100%. Nobody should actually use this yet. Okay. So, what else do we need to talk about? Oh, we'll talk about Microsoft accounts later. I'm making a video right now. Alright, so right now, let's take a look at Windows Update first. Windows Update. So yeah, they have the search bar down there. You're supposed to be using Cortana eventually. But it's the same way as the previous technical preview. It's required updates. So nothing new there, really. They also added a new photo app program. So let's go ahead to pictures and make a new photo. Well, there's no photo there yet. So let's edit it. Okay. So we'll save that. And then if we open it with the regular Photos app, we can do some touch-up work with it. We can apply some sweet hipster filters. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know how to change this. Oh yeah. Let's add some color. Ultra saturated or unsaturated. Oh yeah. Color boost it right there. 
a lot. So yeah, you could touch up a real photo pretty nicely with this. You can do rotate and all that good stuff, I think. Oh, wait, no, that's undo. Save it. Save it. Rotate it. So you can do some pretty sweet stuff with just the photo app. And it does a lot more than just paint. And I wanted to mention, of course, the animations look pretty nice. I think they look good. I have no complaints about the animations at all. Uh, they also updated the settings app. Let's take a look at that. Settings. Yeah, they're making it a little bit more desktop-y. They still have the control panel, of course. So, you still have your traditional uninstall and all that, but your basic settings are in this nice new settings app, which are which is getting better and better. So, this is all much better than the Metro app before. And they also updated the start menu. They actually supposedly rewrote the entire start menu in like some new format XAML or some shit like that. And this is a complete replacement for the start screen as far as I can tell because you just click this and then it goes to full screen. And technically you can remove these, but right now you can't resize the start menu. Supposedly in the future you're going to be able to. So, what else do we need to talk about? I think we hit everything. Okay, so, of course the new big feature everybody loves is Cortana, which is the voice search thing from Microsoft. And you have to allow it, of course, and you have to sign in a Microsoft account, which we have. Rogamp at gmx.com. So log in. And it does two-factor authentication. So we'll get an email. With a one-time code. So good security practice, of course, from Microsoft. All right. Next, enter the code, and now it will switch me from my local account to my Microsoft account, I suppose. I'm not sure how that's going to work. And it also gives you a OneDrive account already, so we want it to call us Rouge Amp, of course. How's that sound? Rouge Amp. Perfect. Love it. But the thing is, is that it can't really do anything like watch. Cortana, open Internet Explorer. Sorry, I can't do this for you right now. Check back again after future updates. Pad. Cortana, type, you are a bitch. Cortana, type, you are a bitch. Oh, it did, but it censored it. What the hell? All right, that's pretty crazy. So, yeah, it doesn't really do much yet, but supposedly it'll do more later. And the weirdest thing is that you can actually change the settings so that it will... Um, it'll activate if you say, Hey, Cortana, which to me is just way too unnerving. I mean, I really don't want to have a hot mic all the time in, um, you know, the operating system. Of course, you don't have to have that if you don't link a Microsoft account. So I think it's good that they segment it like that. And my video is going over time. So let's wrap this up. Build 9926 Windows 10. It is very buggy. Um, some interesting features. I'm not seeing any reason to upgrade to Windows 10 from Windows 7. I have Windows 7 right now, of course. And I think that... It'll be an XP scenario. I think once the Windows 7 updates stop, I think Windows 10 will be a viable option, but right now I don't have any reason to move to it. And if it was done and released today, I don't think I would use it. So I think they're moving in the right direction, but I'm not seeing the killer app, the reason to switch right now, other than the performance upgrades, but I'm not really interested in that. I have a powerful enough computer as it is, so it doesn't really bother me. So thank you all very much for watching and take care.